Hi everyone, uh, thank you for joining this uh, web video about team management. My name is Dr. Jackie Post. I am the Assistant Director of Debate at George Mason University, uh, as well as the Director of the George Mason Debate Institute. Uh, so team management is something I really enjoy talking about. I think the administrative side of kind of debate coaching is one of the more fun aspects. I know that makes me sound like a nerd, but uh, bear with me. Uh, what we're gonna talk about today is just some of the kind of top thoughts about how to consider what team management uh, means uh, for your organization. Uh, and then I will discuss particular um, aspects that you need to consider when it comes to managing teams and my suggestions for maybe what to do in those circumstances. Uh, so to begin, uh, the first thing is what can team management include uh, and why do we need to make this a priority when we begin our uh, coaching endeavors for the year? The first reason I think we need to consider management as a high priority is that it's kind of the necessary beginning foundation block uh, for maintaining teams both um, kind of enjoyment of the debaters um, and just lowering your own stress levels throughout the year. So top thought is organization is a necessary art for maintaining teams. Why do I call it an art? Uh, because it takes a lot of practice. Uh, no one is going to effectively execute a year of administration their first uh, year on the job. Uh, just like any other job, it takes a lot of kind of refinement and kind of continual progress uh, to make things effectively run. Uh, so a couple reasons I think we need to consider organization as a top priority is that uh, working with students, particularly young students in secondary education, uh, predictability and structure is the best way uh, to ensure, ensure healthy development of those students, both as individuals and as learners. Uh, second is that uh, as a debate coach, you have a lot of things that you have to juggle at one time. So ensuring that organized patterns have been set in place will ensure that you are not going to, at the middle or end of the year, feel like you are uh, underwater with all of the difficulties debate may present. Uh, the third thing I would say is that uh, in my experience, what I've seen with poorly managed teams is that the student numbers are very well correlated uh, to how well the team is managed. Uh, so better run teams have more debaters who join and who stick around. Uh, so that is the final uh, kind of aspect I would talk about for why we should consider organization as important. Uh, the second thing to consider at the kind of top level for team management is that uh, we need to think about the situations that we have to be prepared for in advance uh, so that when they arise, uh, we do not have plans in place because that is a nightmare. Um, I could tell you from personal experience. Uh, so a couple or several things to consider of what situations may uh, present themselves. Uh, the first thing is emergency operating procedures. Uh, so this is something that's required by university level organizations to have on file. Um, I'm not sure um, if most or all um, secondary clubs have the same requirement, but even if they don't, it's something I really recommend. Uh, it's a manual each kind of administrator puts together for their team to identify what to do in specific situations. So if you end up leaving the team or if you have younger uh, staff members who are assisting, they have access to this planning document. So if they encounter those situations that you may know how to handle, uh, they may need expertise, which that document can be provided can provide for them. So some examples of what's included in our emergency operating document uh, is uh, what to do if like our bus breaks down at a tournament, uh, what to do if a debater gets significantly ill uh, while competing, uh, how to communicate uh, with parents who are very upset uh, or students who are very upset, 
um, the contact information for uh, people you may need to get in contact with at different situations. So we have our Title IX coordinator uh, listed in our EOP. Uh, we have uh, the Mason police listed. Um, all of those things are things that we include. Uh, second is uh, who gets put in charge if the person who was initially in charge at a tournament or something like that uh, is unavailable. So we always have kind of uh, contingency plans in place. Uh, what to do if you lose a student? Uh, all of these are things to consider. Uh, the second thing that we, uh, I think, can incorporate to have advanced planning for whatever situation may arise are annual planning templates. Uh, so I'm gonna be sharing my screen throughout this video with some examples of how George Mason University's debate team organizes themselves. Uh, and each of these can be kind of shown as almost like a template that you could use for that specific uh, concept. Uh, so I always think you create these as blank documents at first, you save your blank document so that you have it on file for the next year so that you don't have to uh, reinvent the wheel uh, every year when it comes to planning. Uh, the next thing uh, is that team handbooks are something I really encourage for a lot of organizations because it ensures that every member of that club understands policies, regulations, uh, expectations, et cetera, as they compete uh, for your team. Uh, next is staff training. Uh, I think that this is a really effective way to ensure advanced preparation uh, because while you may be required to do training, if you ever have volunteers or alumni who come uh, to coach as at like a very part time level, uh, ensuring that they have the training necessary uh, to encounter situations effectively uh, at the beginning of the year means that you don't have to go back after problems occurred to resolve situations because hopefully that training prevents them from happening in the first place. Uh, and the final thing that I think is really important to ensure advanced preparation is simply advanced communication. Uh, so this is something that I think a lot of um, people who have been in debate for a really long time uh, maybe suffer from not being able to do very effectively, uh, which is to um, plan way in advance, be able to notify people of what they should expect to occur in the upcoming months or weeks uh, so that everyone is on the same page. And we're going to talk about how to do these things in particular contexts as we continue this discussion. But these are just kind of highlighting some ideas of what it could mean to be prepared in advance. Uh, and the final thing that I would say about team management, just at the top level, is that uh, we need to be willing to learn from mistakes and accept that the mistakes that are going to happen are inevitable. Uh, there's so many things that are involved in uh, managing a team. And at some point in time, you're not gonna be able to juggle everything. Something is gonna get misplaced uh, or forgotten and you will have to figure out what to do in that situation. Get used to it, it's part of debate. Uh, so the first thing that I would say about how to effectively learn uh, from maybe mistakes that former coaches have actually made is that, uh, I can tell you from experience, uh, I work for a um, much older um, supervisor who has been in debate for a really long time. And it took a while for us to convince uh, our supervisor to kind of embrace technological progress uh, when it came to how we can use this for our teams. Uh, so I would first identify uh, that technology is constantly changing. And with that, uh, different organizations at corporate levels, et cetera, are inventing things that can be used at the secondary and uh, higher education levels for team management. Uh, so we have started to incorporate a lot of applications that have been uh, made publicly available for things like file sharing, uh, for team communication, et cetera, uh, so that we don't have to rely upon kind of old uh, methods of doing that, which have really helped our team. Something that I would add, though, as a word of precaution is uh, that if you are going to change uh, the way that your team is being managed, uh, Team input is really helpful. So if it would have confused students if you make those changes or if they like what is happening now, maybe that's something you should consider and whether or not that change has to happen. 
Um, next thing I would say is with that in mind, sometimes you're going to try new innovative ideas for how to keep the team in line and it just doesn't work. Uh, so when that occurs, I recommend uh, identifying what did work or what failed, uh, figure out if there is a solution, but if there is not to just kind of move on uh, and rectify whatever that failure caused. Um, with that in mind, if any changes happen or mistakes are being made, I recommend continual communication with team members, uh, even though they're high school or middle school students, uh, they know when things are confusing or things aren't working. Uh, so keeping them up to date on um, like how the team is getting kind of changed or structural things is really important, unless it's something that they don't need to know, which obviously there's a lot of things that our uh, debaters do not need to know that we do on the administrative side. Uh, so with that in mind, I have an agenda for this discussion. Uh, we're going to go over uh, seven different concepts uh, that often are things that we administrators have to tackle uh, and how I recommend organization or management within those different fields. Uh, so the first is recruitment, which I know um, if you were there earlier, you uh, learned about how to recruit from um, Omar Price, uh, Dr. Omar Price, but um, I'm not going to focus on the how to recruit, but rather the um, what you have to do with your recruits once they uh, are on your campus. Uh, the second is data management, uh, file management, communicating with parents, communication writ large, meeting management, and tournament management. Uh, so let's get into it. Uh, the first thing that we'll talk about is organizing recruitment. Uh, so once you get students through the door, uh, what do you do next? Uh, Great question. Uh, there's kind of different practices that you can incorporate, but I have a list of four recommendations that you can use for effective management of recruits. Uh, the first is that you, uh, I always recommend having new competitor info sheets. Uh, we do these with our students every year. Uh, it annoys them to no end, uh, but Having those info sheets, sometimes their information changes, their emergency contacts may change, uh, and that's something that you want to keep in mind. Uh, so uh, we create these via Google form. Uh, I know that your own school may have specific requirements uh, for the type of information you're allowed to get or how to get it. So that's something I would recommend communicating with your own administrators to see what those rules are. But I think information sheets are really important uh, so that you can have them in one place. Um, with that in mind, those information sheets can kind of set the, set the stage for having a collaborative document for communication patterns in the future. So that's something to keep um, kind of at the top of your mind. Uh, the second thing that I recommend doing is some sort of listserv function dedicated to new competitors for communication uh, that would be directed to them. Uh, this is something that I did not do at first when I was a coach, and I really regret it uh, because we just added new students uh, to the team-wide communication network, which was fine. Like, it works, and you should do that, but I think having that separate um, kind of dedicated function where you can only communicate to the new people is really nice because it allows them to create their own cohort um, and uh, prevents your older members from seeing all of these emails or conversations that are supposed to simply be an attention to uh, new debate. The third thing that I would recommend with organizing recruits is early uh, parent involvement. Uh, so I have ex I kind of have this experience just from running uh, high school and middle school debate institutes over the summer. Uh, but the quicker that parents can be informed of kind of what debate means for their child or being on the team means, the less uh, confused emails that you will get later on in the semester or year from parents. So um, what we normally actually do for this is a meeting uh, over Zoom very quick to kind of outline plans for the semester or year, what that means, um, and kind of what, what parents should keep in mind about what their debaters are going to be doing or the, their ch children are going to be doing as it comes to the debate team. Uh, that way, a lot of parents are going to get out all of their initial questions and confusion, uh, and uh, you are going to prevent a lot of headaches down the road uh, of parents who are very frustrated or concerned when they don't know what's going on. 
Uh, the fourth thing I recommend is to create mentorships early with older members and newer members. Uh, and that's something that can create kind of a uh, collaborative environment that uh, ensures the older members can teach the younger members about uh, expectations of the team and how the team is organized, all of those things, uh, which kind of ensures a uh, bottom-up approach to uh, affirming the management practices that you are going to be incorporating into your team. So next is data management. Uh, this is something that I think is really important because of uh, all of the kind of information that we've received both about students and that we have to handle throughout the year when it comes to travel planning or tournament planning. Uh, so having a plan in place for how you're going to organize that data and information is very important. Uh, so I'm gonna kind of talk with you about how our team does this. And of course, not all of this is probably going to be uh, cor correlative to how you would plan to do so. But if you have no ideas, here are some ideas of what you could do. Uh, so Mason has an administrative folder uh, that, um, has different access levels depending upon what what coach you are. So our uh, full time staff members obviously have more information available because of like FERPA constraints at the higher ed level. And then our part time staff members have the information that they need as well on the administrative level without kind of uh, violating the privacy of students. Uh, so um, this is something that I think is really nice because everything is in one place and the people who need the info have it. Uh, and this is kind of what we include on that. Um, we we use um, Dropbox pretty primarily for our team, but um, this document is actually um, on Drive because there are some attached uh, Google spreadsheets. Uh, and we use, and I'll talk about that soon, we use Google spreadsheets instead of uh, Microsoft spreadsheets and I'll explain why soon. Uh, so the first thing that we include are those team info sheets. Um, I usually create an abreast version uh, that any coach could see what that information is. So like uh, name, contact information, uh, emergency contact and allergies, stuff like that. Uh, but information that uh, only full-time coaches could see, uh, I kind of keep in that other separate section, like I had said. And now I'm gonna kind of show you what that um, example of the abreasted info sheet kind of looks like when I share my screen. Uh, so that's the first thing we locate. Uh, next, we have a Google spreadsheet uh, that is just called our coaching spreadsheet. That's actually where all of that information gets coordinated into one spreadsheet with multiple subsections. And I'll kind of show you what ours looks like. And it's uh, a helpful document, everything where you need it at one click. So if you're at a tournament and a situation arises, uh, most of the coaches have um, Google Sheets on their phone so they could simply open it up. Uh, we also have a team wide spreadsheet, and this is information that all of the competitors need to have, and I'll show you that as well. This is where we put our team handbook as well, which obviously we share to students on our team Dropbox, and I'm going to actually show you, give you a little tour around what our Dropbox looks like. Next, we have the coaching manual there, which is different than the team handbook because it is the policies and regulations for our individual staff members so they know uh, what is expected of them. We also include our alumni list here, which is something I recommend if you do not have, you start creating as uh, students graduate to keep uh, contact information there, uh, understand where maybe they are going to college or what their future plans are, uh, because first you can hit them up to judge tournaments, uh, but second, uh, in the future, they might do really great things and having that information at hand to show to your um, current debaters is really good uh, motivation. Uh, the last thing that we include here is a person in charge info list. Uh, so it is both in our emergency operating document, which we include in this administrative folder, and it is separate as well, uh, because if a big problem hits a young, maybe first year out college student who is coaching, uh, has that one document that they see that says people in charge, and they're like, I need to contact this specific person, like the people who are in charge of van registration because our van broke down and they can open that up and they know who to contact right away. All right, uh, so this is actually where I'm going to exit my PowerPoint uh, and start showing you around our specific um, 
Google Sheets that we use with the team. Uh, first, why do we use Google Sheets instead of Excel Sheets? It's because it's a lot more collaborative in nature and it's online accessible. Um, and it uh, can update in a little bit more effective ways. And we've noticed actually that the um, some of the usages are just a little bit more user-friendly. Uh, so there is gonna be a lot of blacked out data on this screen. Uh, like I had said, privacy is something you always wanna keep in mind. Uh, so when incorporating these things, uh, make sure uh, to effectively uh, protect uh, your debater's information. Uh, so this is an example of what our coaches spreadsheet says. Uh, and like I had mentioned, this is something that uh, debaters would not have access to because this is a planning document. Uh, so we have several different subsections. The first is a travel um, sheet. Uh, and this is where the coaches uh, start to plan out what the year is going to look like, who is attending what tournament, et cetera. If you notice, we've got kind of all of this set up. So even coaches know like the specific dates of tournaments, their names, um, and then a list of who is going to that tournament on the coaching side, who's going in varsity, who's going in JV, who's going in novice. And we have this set up for the whole year. So uh, fall and spring semester. Um, we always keep a documented list of what our plans then would be for partnerships, uh, both for this kind of current year and maybe future planning ideas. Not maybe as important at the high school level, but it's definitely important at the college level. Something else that we consider as well um, is that we always include end of year meetings. And this is just a document that we keep uh, so that we know what debaters like plans are, uh, what their goals are, uh, what they would like to work on. Um, so we've got these different questions that we include uh, and then uh, obviously these blacked out debater names. Now we have, like I had said before, we have them fill out um, a debater information sheet that is a Google um, form. And then I take the Google forms that every person filled out. You can open it as a spreadsheet on like a Google sheet. And then I copy that over here. So we have like the debaters names, we get their t-shirt sizes, uh, their individual student numbers, emails, phone numbers, their birthday, major year. Uh, we travel to a lot of national tournaments. Uh, so we get their uh, like airline miles information in case it's nice to get that, give them miles when they travel. Um, their emergency contact information, health insurance information in case you need to give it to a hospital at a tournament their allergies and their food restrictions. Uh, so those are things that we kind of get at the front end. I don't know how much of that is applicable for you all or if your institutions would have rules about that um, and what you could garner, but that's something I would recommend consulting with an administrator at your school because getting a lot of this information is helpful for organizing travel tournaments. Um, this is where we also include the similar um, info sheet, but more abreast version for our recruits. Uh, because they might quit, <laughs> to be honest. So you want to have them in a separate section, the quick, easy information, uh, so that uh, if they stay on the team, you start to uh, incorporate them back over to this team info sheet. But at first, you don't really know if they're going to like debate. This is why we keep it separate. But it's up to you if you cho choose that. We also have our alum document here. Like I had said before, you want that alum list. We keep that on the coaching uh, document just for things. Um, we calculate points for tournaments and how we're doing over the year. That's what this is for. Um, maybe not necessary for you. Um, I have my own document. Like I had mentioned, we don't tell our part-time coaches everything. Uh, so I, um, put all of that on my novices spreadsheet because I'm our primary novice coach. And this is something only I have access to. Uh, so this is where I plan our meeting content, um, I have a specific novice information here. Uh, and then I have my thoughts for pairings, tournament availability. As the year goes on, some other maybe pertinent information would go here as well that I would only have access to. And then the final spreadsheet that we have is the team one that I mentioned. We have a specific results spreadsheet. If any of you are interested in having something like this, we call it our big board. We keep kind of track of if we had a team at a national tournament, 
whose initials were like JD, if you put wins and losses for their different rounds, that actually calculates it. Um, and our younger debaters really like to follow the tournament online when our older debaters go and they get to see it here, which is kind of nice. And it helps you know how teams are doing in the tournament. So you don't have to constantly look on tabroom.com to kind of update, oh yeah, that team is, they've won three rounds and lost one, right? So that's kind of helpful. Uh, we have an assignments section for as we kind of dole out our plans for what debaters are going to research uh, and assign due dates, et cetera, which we have available for debaters to see on the spreadsheet. We have a tournament info sheet. I think this is really important, uh, especially if you're going to an in-person tournament. So um, we identify all of the attendees of the tournament. Um, what specific hotel room they're in. Uh, if you need to go knock on a door to wake a debater up, uh, having this list on your phone is really helpful. Uh, and then we assign uh, seats and vans so that we don't lose a debater. Uh, so we identify what van they're in. Uh, we've got a really large team. I don't know if this will correlate for you. We've got about 40 debaters. Uh, so we actually do need to assign their seats or someone is going to get left behind. Uh, we have partnerships listed here so they know what's going on. And then sometimes we'll identify if there's a primary person who will be coaching them for the weekend. This is an example of early and advanced communication. So if debaters have access to this spreadsheet, they can know what's going on and that can answer a lot of questions that would come on the back end. Um, so we also have a spreadsheet and this is something I recommend to every coach when I like talk to them. Uh, organizing meals at tournament can be really difficult. Uh, and if this is something that you all do for your students, having just a list of what they would have ordered if you go somewhere is really helpful. So we always ask them to fill this out. Like if we would go to Wendy's, what would you get? Uh, and they fill this out for themselves at the beginning of the year. So then if we're at a tournament and we have to buy them like Chick-fil-A and I go, I know what to get them. So it prevents you from having to get, like go to an individual room when they're competing to figure out what food they want. Then we have, and this is kind of the abreasted example of the info sheet for um, anyone on the team to have access to. So the names of the people on the team, phone numbers and emails. So everyone can know, oh, we lost X person in this building. We need to find them so that we can take them back to the hotel. Uh, they're like, all right, well, just go on the spreadsheet. Their phone number is there. Uh, so those are some examples of how we use our different spreadsheets. Uh, and I would definitely recommend kind of coordinating thoughts of how you can do this for yourself in ways that keep you organized. Uh, so next thing is file management. Uh, so this one's going to be a little bit quicker. Uh, sorry. Uh, you definitely need a plan for how your individual debaters are going to fit, share documents or evidence that they produce. Uh, so the big questions are how first, um, we still utilize a, uh, Gmail listserv for this. Um, most teams don't do that anymore. They simply maybe have a Dropbox where people put it, uh, they send it via something else. Uh, but you have to have one coordinated plan for where things get sent or added or else they're everywhere and they get lost. Um, the next is when, like, is there a specific date that you want these things to get sent? So I always think when uh, creating kind of assignments or research thoughts, uh, identifying when those things should be produced is really important. The next thing I would recommend is to identify norms for file naming. Uh, this may sound odd, but um, you don't want students sending a document to the rest of the team that simply says the stuff. Uh, which if you don't give them kind of norms for how to name documents, you're going to see this. They're going to have random things that they put as the subject header. Uh, so we actually tell them to identify it by what the argument is. Um, so like hegemony, impact, answers, <laughs> and then a dash, uh, what tournament they produced this for, the date that they produced it on, and then their initials at the end. The reason we do it this way is if they're, if we are searching for that document, uh, because we know there was a piece of evidence in it that we need, uh, and we know it was produced for the Wake Forest tournament, we can search for that on our, um, like Gmail applications, like hegemony Wake Forest, and it will pop up that file from the subject header. The next thing to keep in mind is to create a shared team folder. 
so some people, some teams will use Dropbox for this to put all of the evidence the team has compiled. Others will use Google Drive. Others will use Microsoft Teams. All of these have their pros and cons. They're not that different in my opinion, but you at least need to have one that you decide to use. Um, the things that you can include in this uh, shared team folder are subfolders for things like back files. After a year of debate, all of that research, you don't just want it to go away. You want to keep it in case you can use it for the next year or a topic. Uh, current year folder with the different uh, files being produced. Each partnership can get their own folders of what they're working on. Uh, we have a specific folder called individual work in progress. So as debaters are doing research, they can save it into that folder and we can like check what it looks like. Uh, granted, we, in many ways, I would probably say George Mason micromanages, but um, it's up to you what level of organization you want. Uh, so I'm going to give you an example now of kind of what this can look like uh, when it comes to um, a Dropbox. Uh, so apologies for the stop share for a second. Because uh, I just have to open up my Dropbox. Share Dropbox. Okay. Uh, so ours look like this. So we have the individuals folders that I'm I was telling you about earlier. So this is just every person has a folder with their name on it, uh, and that's where they put work in progress. Once it's completed and sent out. Every debater has their own partnership folder uh, that is not in the team wide folder, but are subfolders that get shared uh, with the coaches as well. Uh, we have our completed files for the topic we're working on now. Uh, the, the college topic is about uh, antitrust policy, so that's what that is. Uh, we have a folder for practice debate documents. Um, if we produce a file during a team meeting, people will put those documents there. Uh, and then we have a folder for scouting. So if they debate a team, uh, the whatever those teams documents were, so we can keep track of things. Uh, we have a style guide that we actually save on the outside, which is how to format evidence um, because we like to keep it coordinated. So debaters have access to that as well. Uh, so that's kind of what our um, team-wide Dropbox looks like. Uh, and like I said, uh, the files get sent to uh, our listserv and then uh, one of the coaches will move it over to the completed antitrust files is kind of what we do. Uh, definitely not what you have to do, but um, that's just what's worked for us. Um, so thinking about this as we move on, obviously um, those are not the only aspects of um, management that teams have to have. Uh, because beyond like the file management, uh, specifically at the high school or middle school level, uh, oftentimes you're going to have to think about organization when it comes to speaking to parents. Uh, so like I had mentioned before, the first thing is the earlier you can bring parents in on the idea that their students are a member of the debate team, uh, the better it will probably be for you. Um, so th things that you can incorporate when parents are kind of acknowledge or understand that their students are doing debate uh, is concise communication. Uh, so I noticed uh, after a lot of experience with trying to send kind of when I had a lot of things I needed to tell parents and I just sent them an email with like 10 different things, uh, most of the time something got lost uh, in all of the kind of like mess of that email. So if I had like different tasks that I needed them to complete uh, if they would probably miss like one of those things. So I always recommend very concise communication. Um, so the way that I've noticed works the best is if parents know to expect uh, an email from you at a specific time throughout the month. Uh, so like a, a kind of like digest email and then after that, any email that you send should be like a like something occurred, you need to know this. Uh, so if it's not something that can't wait until the digest. Uh, so sending like a bi-weekly update email, here's all the things you need to know. If they know it's it comes every other Monday, it's more likely that they're going to read it in its entirety to kind of see what's going on. Like I had mentioned before, a beginning of the year parent meeting can really set the stage for a lot of this as well, because 
if there are things that parents need to know for every time their child is traveling to a tournament, you can cover that at the beginning. And then you probably uh, are not going to have as many parents like forget their child needs to bring X, Y, Z because they were notified at the beginning, but you can send like a, a reminder. And most of the time that will be sufficient. Things that I would avoid a barrage of emails, something's going to get lost uh, and not setting up some sort of norm of communication. Uh, if you don't do that early, you're going to get parent calls at like 930 at night and uh, expectation that you answer them whenever that happens. But if there is a norm of I'm going to be making sure you know everything you need to know at these specific times, uh, here is a folder of like that you can access from online, like a Dropbox with all the information. Some of those things can really help to ensure parents feel safe and secure with the fact that their students are often uh, traveling to debate tournaments or attending uh, like debate classes after school, stuff like that. So keep that in mind. Next thing is communication management. Uh, so the, I don't have a ton of recommendations here beyond the fact that there should be a central location uh, for communication for the team uh, so that uh, things do not get lost in the mess of multiple kind of uh, media choices for communicating. Uh, so our team uses Slack as a messaging center. We have found that this works really well uh, because uh, Slack is a bit more of a professional site. So uh, it doesn't have uh, some of the things that like Discord has where you can send auto, auto like GIF messaging, which leads to a lot of debaters just sending spam to the um, communication center, but uh, Slack can let you create uh, sub channels for uh, people to communicate. So you can have team sub channels, uh, things like that. If you have a tournament you're attending, you can create a channel for it. So the members who are attending the tournament get communication while they're at the tournament about that. You can make it accessible on your phone. Uh, so it's really helpful uh, to keep uh, everybody in the loop of what's going on. Uh, other people use Teams or Discord for this, which I think are also fine uh, choices. Uh, so recommendations that I would have though for managing that communication, you want to develop norms early for what is expected when people use uh, team communication platforms. Uh, so we have uh, a norm of please do not spam the professional channels that we have. So um, do not just like send random like YouTube videos, etc. Uh, we actually created the sub channel simply for that if debaters want to message like funny things, it's its own thing. So nobody else has to see it. Um, next is when to message. Uh, if you don't create constraints for like high school students uh, to not message the Slack that you are a part of at two in the morning, uh, you're gonna have to see all of those messages. Uh, and the last is private messaging constraints. Um, I definitely think that there's probably a lot of rules about this for individual high schools or middle schools. So obviously talking with administrators before making these plans are high, like mandatory things to keep in mind. Next is meeting management. Uh, so an effective meeting can make the difference between a student learning and succeeding in debate and not learning and failing in debate. So um, when considering uh, meeting management, the first thing I would outline is there needs to be some sort of communicated agenda. Uh, so I utilize Google Classrooms for our meetings and we have PowerPoints for every meeting. Even if that PowerPoint, the, the slides don't have any information, we're not gonna give a lecture. It might just be me sharing a PowerPoint slide that has an agenda of what we're gonna talk about. And I always think that that's really important. The structure I think that really works for team meetings is beginning with administrative information, updates that need to happen so students are made aware, um, assignments, discussing what those things are, and then either uh, doing both a uh, lecture with uh, strategy or skills sessions afterwards, or just doing one of those options. And I think that that really sets the stage for if students know that that's happening at every meeting they go to, um, consistency is key in my opinion. Uh, so I always recommend after um, meetings, posting the administrative side of those meetings so that students can go back and kind of see what was happening. Uh, we actually nominate a team secretary who like does that for us, which is really nice and they can put it on their resume. So maybe something to consider for your team. Uh, like I mentioned, we utilize Google Classroom. Uh, something else that we do is um, 
even when we meet in person, we record all of our meetings on a Zoom call, uh, largely because I've found that if you need to share your screen or you want debaters to see something, if you don't have access to a projector, um, you can share a screen on Zoom in the same way if students have laptops and it's super helpful. Uh, but it also it allows you to record meetings, share to your computer or the cloud and then transfer over to Google Classroom quite easily. Uh, so I found that that's a super helpful model for um, doing meetings. And the final thing, like I had recommended, PowerPoints are awesome, visual cues. Uh, you all are teachers, so you get it. So I'm not gonna like, I don't know, reinvent the wheel on that. Uh, so the last thing I wanted to talk about was tournament management. Um, I'm not gonna spend a ton of time here. I just wanted to make you recall when I was sharing screen uh, of our um, debater spreadsheet where we had that specific tournament uh, subsheet that has all that information planned out of like, you're gonna be in this van, uh, here is what hotel room you're in, et cetera. Uh, having that publicly available in advance is really helpful. Um, I've actually called hotels before we arrived. And if, sometimes they're actually able to tell you what room numbers you're going to have. Uh, and that means you can have that whole thing filled out before you even like exit the van. <laughs> which I think is super helpful. If it's not like a sleepaway tournament, understanding kind of leave times, uh, practices like that are things that you can also incorporate onto that um, spreadsheet so that students have access to it. Um, and I find that uh, solves a lot of confusion while at tournaments. Uh, so I think that that was the only thing that I wanted to add for um, this section. Uh, so obviously I'm doing this virtually uh, and you're watching this after the fact. Uh, so the final thing that I wanted to just say is that if you have any questions, uh, maybe you're new to this, even if it's not about team management, I can definitely assist. Uh, and my information, which I wish I would have created a section for this on my slides and I did not, my apologies. Uh, so I'm just gonna type it right here. Uh, my email is, jpopst at gmu.edu. Um, so you can contact me through email whenever I'm usually quite quick to respond. Uh, so hope that helped. Like I said, please feel free to email with questions. Bye.